Good morning and welcome to the second day of the Sea Angling Classic. If you missed what happened last time, here's a little reminder. I think the fish is going to be fantastic. The big question is, how good is the catching going to be? There are fish feeding quite heavily, quite fast, out here in the Solent at the moment. An amazing amount of fish already caught, which is, is mind-blowing, actually. I, I was, you know, with these competitions, there's always that sort of feel, oh, how's it going to start? But I'll tell you what's been interesting. A lot of bream have been caught. You know, this event really is the stuff of dreams. And I don't know about you, but when I was a small boy, I dreamt about taking part in big sporting events and taking on the grown-ups. Well, that is exactly what happened yesterday on board Tequila, because an 11-year-old and a 14-year-old boy are right up there with the leaders and with a chance of winning all the big prizes. Now then, people, you guys had a rather special day yesterday. You've woken up this morning after sleeping the night on the boat in charge of the Sea Angling Classic. How is that? Um, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Don't really know how to feel, to be honest. It's um, yeah, very excited for the next day, but it's another long day ahead, yes. so we're not getting too excited. I know you've got two young lads on the boat, 11, 14. I'm not going to ask your two ages. I'm far too much of a gentleman to do that, but it's clear you guys can fish a bit. Talk us through what happened yesterday, because that was a bit special. Oh, uh, location, location, location. John, John got us on a good spot, and thankfully there's a lot of fish there. So. It's interesting you caught, you know, decent species as well. It wasn't just, you know, a one-dimensional day, was it? No, we went to a mark where I know that we can catch most of the species. We were a little bit worried. Well, we didn't even try for bass. We were very worried of bass, didn't bother. Um, knew we could get tope, knew we could get smooth hounds possibly a ray and we thought we'd get bream so and, and it worked and that's what happened <laughs> yeah we saw you young man with a very nice taupe yesterday right at kind of i think it was almost a half past three wasn't it half past three no yeah. that was a hound was it a hound yeah a hound. a hound so how did you enjoy yesterday i enjoyed it very much it's quite I'm quite competitive, so oh. it's quite, I quite I quite enjoy a little competition. It was just quite fun because I didn't I thought we would come last. I mean I didn't think we'll win. You must be so proud. You're really, really proud. I mean the whole you know the whole reason we entered was for these two. The rules changed because they wouldn't couldn't enter, but they you know we'd have had to leave them behind and I'd go fishing with them every day. They every time I go out they come with me, you know, and we and they generally catch more fish than us. Don't know why. <laughs> well, all the preparations are underway now for the boats to go out onto the start line for the second day of this fantastic event. You know, isn't that just so special to hear those guys talking about the experience they had yesterday and the dreams that those lads must have had sleeping on that boat last night? Just, you can't begin to imagine, can you? Now, we've got a fantastic day ahead of us. The weather's a little bit different today. It's not quite as warm, um, although, you know, out there it'll still be fairly brutal. But I get the feeling we're about to see another fantastic day's fishing out in the Solent. I think there are one or two people quite frustrated after yesterday because certain tactics just didn't work for them. Now, obviously, that's what always happens in a fishing competition, isn't it? You go in with a plan, it goes peak tong, and then you have to adapt. But there are still one or two of the big boys, in fact, some of the bad boys, who are contenders for this match. So let's get out there, see what's going on, and get this second day underway. Here we are, we're out on Boulder Bank again. The second day is well underway. In fact, a load of bream have already been caught by some of the anglers taking part in this event. But we're starting off with boat 14 just behind us, the Challoners and Kelvin Hindmarch, who are leading the whole thing. Now, we've got an intense day's fishing ahead of us, and of course, the pack are gonna be chasing them very, very hard indeed. 
Um, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens. Let's be honest. You know, you've got an 11 and a 14 year old boy on that boat who are living the absolute dream. Um, and if they do well today, I can imagine the levels of excitement will be through the roof. But lots of things can happen. It's going to be a slightly different day today because I sense the, the wind has switched a little bit. It's a northeasterly today. There's not very much breeze at all. Don't think it's going to be as hot as it was yesterday, thankfully. But let's see what happens. Um, we'll keep an eye on these guys for a little bit and then start to follow one or two of the other boats. What a phenomenal start to the day. There is young Toby Chaloner, aged 11, rod bent over, and he is into the first fish of the morning on board tequila. Now, a lot of fish have been caught, but let me tell you this, this is incredible. Everything that's been caught so far has been a bream, and this doesn't look like a bream to me. And Dad John, with the net, and that, is a pretty serious looking smooth hound. Aren't they pleased with themselves and so they should be now. The all important measuring and photographing process is just about to take place. And this I think was one of the reasons that the guys on tequila did so well yesterday because they took their time with their photography and making sure all the details were sorted and the admin process that we discussed yesterday, Mr. Porter, um, they did very well. So everything they did basically was, I think, allowed and sorted and went through smoothly. Now, here we are looking at this boat. Isn't this phenomenal? Yes, this, this is fairy tale stuff. If you had a youngsters winning this competition, well, you couldn't write it, could you? I imagine he's very, very excited, but there's a long way to go yet. We've oh, got yeah. a whole day to go. We've got a different conditions to yesterday. Things could change. But at the moment, my fingers are crossed for him and it's brilliant to see him doing well. So talk to us a little bit about the conditions then. How, how is the little change? What's that going to do to the fishing? Well, certainly we've got the wind coming up this afternoon, so that's going to create um, a bit of a challenge, especially for the smaller boats. But hopefully it's not going to come till right at the end of the period. But the, the, a big factor of this change, we've got a smaller tide today. And fishing a tide, as we discussed yesterday, is a bit of a, bit of a skill. And uh, some of the boats would have struggled yesterday. We've just seen that fish safely returned by the Challoners on Tequila, and that will cement their position at the top of the leaderboard. So, uh, yeah, let's see how things go, Steve. Amazing to see youngsters taking part and not sat with an iPad in front of them. <laughs> Absolutely. We've steamed over towards the Isle of Wight. Fantastic sight in the background with the white cliffs. And in front of us, boat number 63, Love Cat currently in second place. Do you know, something really interesting is happening with this match today because this change in conditions that you were talking about earlier on, we're getting some taupe feeding. These guys have had three smooth hounds and a taupe. What's the difference, Steve? What's going on? The difference between all the species we're trying to get in this competition and the taupe is most of them are held to ground, but the taupe aren't. And what I mean by being held to ground is if we go and find some a rough patch in shore, fairly shallow water, we can expect to find the bream. They're going to be established there during the bream season. We find a, a bank and we're likely to find rays on the bank. Well, taupe aren't held to ground. They could be anywhere. They, they just cruise around in packs, homing in on bait fish. And so we never really know where they're going to be. So for a boat to come out in the middle of nowhere and the chance of finding a taupe, takes a bit of balls really because they may not be here. We know where they're likely to be, but of course the taupe's the biggest fish of the qualifying species. And since the results are gonna be on the overall length of the qualifying fish caught, anyone who gets taupe within their catch are gonna be front runners. Well, you're talking about that because obviously boat 14 with the Challoners on board are still leading at the moment. The two boys doing brilliantly. Um, young Toby, who we saw landing a smooth hound earlier on, has actually also had a ray. I mean, that's just great, isn't it? But, these guys are 20 centimetres behind them. I mean, that's that's one bream, isn't it? Yeah, it is one bream. And um, it makes me hope that they, the young lads can get a few taupe on board. Interesting stuff's ha happening elsewhere too. Um, obviously, we've got two categories, so recreational boats, but also the charters. On Harvest Moon, which has got some of the best anglers in the country on it, people like Steve Batchelor, Colin Searles, the skipper Stuart Newell, they are catching taupe too. 
Um, you know, really, really interesting stuff is happening over there. Some big fish being caught. Steve Batchelor, particularly, has caught this enormous fish. I mean, what a brilliant piece of angling. Um, and his skipper, Stuart Newell, also had a big one. But in the recreational boat category, an angler called Wayne Comburn, who is a fantastic shark angler, really well known around these parts, particularly for catching threshers, actually. Um, Wayne has caught a taupe, but I think the taupe may well have had its revenge on him because uh, it's bitten him and there's been some claret and he's had to bandage his hand up. So uh, fishing for these shark species isn't without its hazards, is it? No, and that's uh, sad to hear that that's happened, but of course there is risk involved with this game and for any activity in life where there's risk, that's why we do it, it brings excitement. But and the taupe is a particularly awkward fish to handle. It's lively, has got sharp teeth. And if you're trying to measure it, of course, which is not normally what we would do. Often the fish are released by the side of the boat, but obviously for this competition, they've got to come in and be measured, and there's a risk to that. You know, a very, very nasty injury, and I suppose the one thing we have to say is that we hope the taupe is all right. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, the anglers out here on the Solent are sharing this water with some extraordinary craft, like this thing behind me here. But the Sea Angling Classic is about so much more than what's happening just out here in the Solent. Three, two, one, let's go crabbing! One of the first events to kick off the Sea Angling Classic celebrations this year was a crabbing competition for children in Portsmouth. For many of us, it could be the first introduction we get into the fascinating underwater world. More than 200 families gathered at Porchester Castle to take part in the simple but glorious activity of seeing who could catch the most crabs in two hours. And while it was a lot of fun for all the children involved, the day had a greater meaning behind it. This event is particularly directed towards the, uh, the local families and local communities in and around Portsmouth. Um, and really to get the, the, the children and the families engaged with best practice angling, catch and release, and, uh, and, and to get them involved in respect for the environment, of course. And uh, all those things are encompassed within crabbing. I'm really enjoying it. I'm off for the school holidays for a week, so just I really like crabbing. It's really fun. It's a delightful, and for Chelsea, he did a bit cheeky too much. It's a nice day for it, so it's not a bad day to work, is it? Um, I like it. It's really nice seeing how enthusiastic the kids were and stuff, and even if it's just crabbing, and that's interesting, it really inspires them to be, you know, interested in the sea itself and then understand the importance of protecting it and stuff like that. Yeah. Love to see the kids out enjoying this area and doing a bit of crabbing and I get a great kick out of that, you know, seeing the smile on their face when they catch their first fish or they've got their first large crab. We all love to see our gorgeous clear water filled with fish, but if we don't protect our shorelines, they won't stay clean for long. One of the most important things for the SAC this year was emphasising the need to look after our environment. How did they encourage that? With beach cleanups. All of the competitors had to sign a pledge to take a stroll down to the beach with a litter picker and a bin bag, scouring the ground for rubbish, picking it up and then disposing of it responsibly. The event has also been a chance for charities like Enable Ability to help the people in their care build some confidence. Everybody, in fact, in the Sea Angling event, Sea Angling Classic, has to do a shoreline or waterside cleanup. So I work at Gunworth Marina, literally just under the Spurnica Tower just there. So we're the hosts for the Sea Angling Classic project but as well as doing that, we're pretty passionate about doing the environmental side of things. Yeah. You've got to inspire other people to be careful in the future. So like the younger generation is the key one, isn't it? So get them as kids and stuff and show them interest through crabbing, but that's what inspires them to then become marine biologists and help save the planet and not do things that mess it up. I've always been sort of out of doors and I've got five grandsons and they're all like to get out and about. And I lived in Portchester great part of my life. I love to see the shore 
shoreline clean and tidy. Love to see the kids out enjoying this area. Can they do it in a pretty picking? A lot of them have um, high anxiety with being out in the, you know, in the open with lots of um, people, uh, but this really helps socialising, being with their friends as well. That is so lush, it's really good for me. Now, think back to that moment when you caught your first ever fish. That's what the children here are experiencing. While the sea anglers were out on the water competing, these youngsters were taking their first casts under the watchful eye of some experts. South Parade Pier in Southsea is famous for its fairground rides and amusement arcades. But today the Angling Trust was giving children their first chance to use a fishing rod and for some to see real live fish. During the event children were taught all about safe practice, catch and release and of course there were a few impressive results. Fishing is not one of those activities that you can just watch someone fishing and then go and do it straight away. You need some advice and guidance on how to use the equipment. We're obviously dealing with uh, live creatures. So we've got to learn how to care for them, how to unhook them, how to return them safely. And what you tend to find is that it doesn't take much to get people to become anglers and to get hooked, you know, excuse the pun. Absolutely fantastic just to see the faces on the youngsters when they're catching their first ever fish. It takes me back a, a lot of years to be fair. Um, and, and yeah, the thought that they, there's a chance that someone will carry on fishing through their lives is, is great. That's, that's what we're here to do. I started fishing when I was five. Most of the people here that are anglers started fishing when they were the same age. Just to, to see youngsters and their parents and family members come through and get those same sort of smiles and wow moments that we got, you know, that's that's why we do it, you know. And it also makes sure there's a sport for the future. That's it, calm the eel down. That's my magic trick. 68, 69 68 centimetres? 68 centimetres, that's a huge fish. He's brilliant, uh, slimy. Just hold us up here for the moment. I really like the fishing, it's really nice. You're living in Portsmouth, it's part of Rite of Passage. <laughs> so yeah, it's just nice to be able to do something a little bit different. We've had a bit of a move and we're now looking at boat number 11 which is Avonhurst with the skipper Jason Williams and Liam Smith on board and they've had a cracking morning catching probably more species than anyone else out on the water at the moment. Uh, they've had bream to 91 centimetres, surprisingly a 54 centimetre bass, a cracking fish that is. Uh, not many bass have been caught this weekend so that's a great achievement. Smooth hound to 259 centimetres and also a smallish tope to 83 centimetres. But I can also report at 11.30 on day two of the Sea Angling Classic, the lead has changed hands. Up until now, the Challoners and Kelvin Hindmarch on Tequila have been holding off all comers, but a slight change caused by the capture of two very big tope on boat number 49, Smart Fish, captained by Will Parkinson, those two taupe taking them almost a metre into the lead. And this is really starting to get to the point now where this match is approaching the crucial period. So fascinating stuff. There is still plenty of time for both the guys on 11 that we're looking at now and the challenges to catch up. Elsewhere, in third place at the moment, boat number 33 paintball with Stefan Eppeline and Kevin Hare. They've got 402 centimetres. Do you know one really interesting thing that is happening today is that the smooth hounds, yesterday they were prolific, loads and loads of fish caught. Today, not so much, they've just switched off. Now there are one or two fish still being caught, but to try and catch up with the boat leading, people need to be catching those smoothies about 95 centimetres, which is where people scored yesterday. This is gonna go right down to the wire, you know. So there we see the measuring process of Bream on Valkyrie, one of the charter boats taking part in the event. Of course, two different categories, the recreational boats, which is where Tequila and the, the lads, the Challoners, are taking part with all the others, but also the charter boat skippers. There's Zach Cairns taking a big mouthful of coffee. Good morning, Zach. We were with them last year and they won the event overall but slightly different this year different setup in the classic looks like we've got a fish on the end as well now then what's this 
Very light rod. A couple of fish here. What was that's a light rod? He's put it down for bream. Something else has grabbed it, Steve. You reckon? What's going on here? Well, I'm keen to see. It's a solid bend in that rod. I mean, you might have a, a ray or something. Typical, isn't it? A little white rod bending from the tip ring to the butt. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, it's only got a bit of action going on there. We've got, it uh, looks like a fish coming in on the other side of the boat as well. Do you know these charter boat skippers are good, aren't they? I've heard, I've heard tell that there are some good charter boat skippers. I don't know if you know any. <laughs> well, Zach's got a good reputation for sure. And he's on a great boat. South Cat, I think, is one of the best charter boats you can get. His father, of course, Glenn, he's on another South Cat. And Glenn, in my opinion, is probably the most successful charter skipper in the land. Not only is he a, a great skipper and attracted lots of uh, anglers, he also builds a very nice boat, fits out a nice boat. So, yeah, so we've got a ray the, br there. I mean, the bream rig's got, got a ray. With that, because that's got to be a, a bycatch on the bream gear, I would have thought. <laughs> that's fantastic, sir. What a brilliant achievement. It could be another ray on the other side, because that's certainly not a bream. Like well, a good fish to catch in this competition, a ray, because there hasn't been too many of them. No, no, is that one of the things today that we're going to experience with that sort of slight change, smaller tide, easier to present your baits, maybe? I would have thought so, yeah. I'm, I'm not familiar with this area and, and how, uh, you know, what, what state of ties the, the, the rays feed on best, but certainly up our end, where you've got a, a, a lighter flow of water, anglers seem to get their baits on the bottom better. And as like I was saying earlier, the, the, the fast tide of yesterday would have been difficult for some anglers, but today it's going to be easier and we will see um, a lot of people up on the scoreboard today, a lot more than yesterday, I think. More of a level playing field. Well, that was a smoothie, so a ray and a smoothie to Valkyrie. Um, great stuff for them early on. Um, so let's get off and see if we can see some other fish being caught elsewhere. Amazing stuff here in the Sea Angling Classic. Day two as we're looking at Avonhurst because having overtaken them and gone into the lead, Smart Fish Boat 49, Toby Challoner, aged 11, has struck back for tequila. The 11 year old has landed a taupe approaching a meter and the boys and their dad and Kelvin Hindmarch are back in the lead with the slenderest of margins. This is incredible. We're looking at Avonhurst and after patiently waiting, boat number 11 at last has another fish on. They've had a really, really quiet spell, having had a fantastic morning. And at last, the tip on one of those rods has hooped over and they are in. This match is gonna be amazing. Now I can bring you one other piece of incredible news because as we're watching boat 11 playing this fish, just a few moments ago, Smartfish took the lead, overtaking the guys on tequila. John Challoner, Kelvin Heinmarch, and the two boys had lost their lead after holding on to it for the best part of a day. They were overtaken. However, young Toby Challoner, aged just 11, has now landed a 94 centimetre smooth hound to put his team back in the lead against the guys on Smartfish. Isn't that just absolutely incredible? Fascinated to see what sort of fish this is. Now then, it's definitely a shark species. It's got away. You can't believe it. It's come off, almost at the boat. Almost at the boat. And that could be a huge blow for the guys on boat 11. You can see their heads dropping, wandering around on deck. They cannot believe that just happened. It was within seconds of being landed. That's a terrible blow for Avonhurst. Well, we've left the guys on Avonhurst behind to recover from their calamity a few minutes ago. And the news that the Challoners have retaken the lead by an incredible margin of just four centimetres from Smartfish, the news has now changed again because Paintball, Stefan Appleheim and Kevin Hare have taken the lead. But we're into the last four hours of the match now and I've got the sense that this is going to be absolutely incredible because we've had more than 500 metres of fish caught in this match. 
more than 780 fish officially registered over the two days. And do you know what separates the top three boats in a race for £50,000 and a £100,000 prize boat? One fish. One 70 centimetre fish between all of those anglers and probably the biggest prize we'll see in recreational boat fishing for a while. Just amazing. Well, there are Kevin and Stefan. Kevin in the red jacket and Stefan just adjusting his lines at the back of the engine and they're leading the event at the moment. They've had the reason they're in front, three smooth hounds and three taupe that count. They've had actually more than that, but the three measurers in each of those two species, obviously the longest fish in the competition, have put them in the lead. Wow. That looked like a little bite. Now they've just said they're possibly going to go and move to another mark to try and catch some of the other species, which probably means searching for bream, maybe some flatfish. But it looks like Stefan might have a bite here. He's just had a little indication on his rod tip, saw it bounce, and he's just picked up his rod. Little tiny boat, number 33. Flags flying in the wind. Is that a take? Is that a take? Yes, strike. Hmm, interesting. They've just actually put a smooth hound back just as we arrived. Uh, obviously wasn't big enough to replace any of the smoothies that they'd already caught. Elsewhere though, things are still progressing. And we're in a position now where, well, this is the really serious bit, isn't it? This is where this match really starts to get into an area where it becomes very, very interesting indeed. Clearly some activity on the boat. They're thinking about a move. I think it's very wise having got the species that they need. You can see the amount of weed that's built up around their anchor rope at the front of the boat there. So yeah, interesting stuff. And in this little section of water, we've got the other boats too. So Smart Fish boat number 49 now pushed down into third. And away in the distance, Tequila, with the Challoners and Kelvin Hindmarch on board, still holding on to the hope that they can make that incredible dream a reality of winning this competition. Isn't this fantastic? So here's boat number 14 and the young superstar that is Toby Challoner, aged 11, into a fish. What have we got here then? Is it going to count? I've got a feeling it's the dreaded Solent dogfish. Not what we need to see. Unfortunately, it's the wrong species. Sometimes, you know, it's just pot luck in these waters. Your bait goes down. And if the fish you want picks it up, fantastic, but that's not the species that we want. Things are happening though here, you know, it's incredible because over on boat number 49, fishing just by the boulder bank, they've managed to take the lead again with a fantastic smooth hound, which has changed the game once more. And we are still in a position where 70 odd centimeters separates the boats in first, second and third. At the moment, the scores on the doors are Smart Fish ahead in first place, Paintball in second, and boat number 14, Tequila, in third. And we've got about two and a half hours to go. We've got an hour and a half left here on the Solent and things have really stopped happening for all of the top boats in this competition. We've kind of entered a period like we did yesterday, which the guys upstairs are calling the doldrums. The wind has come in, the tide has slackened off and really absolutely nothing is happening. In fact, 
those top five boats out of all of them, do you know what? Almost none of them have caught a single fish in the last hour. Now that's extraordinary, bearing in mind what we've seen over the last day or so. So I'm just going to run through uh, the top five for you. In first place at the moment, it's Smartfish, and they've got a total of 1,270 centimetres. In second, not very far back at all, in fact, 16 centimetres back. That is boat number 33, Paintball, Stefan Eppeline and Kevin Hare. Back in third, Tequila, the Challoners, the two boys, their dad John and Kelvin Hindmarch. They're on 1196 centimetres. Back in fourth position on 1121 centimetres on Love Cat, Philip Lovegrove and Ricky Collier. In fifth, the bad boys, boat number two, Luke Fitzgerald, Martin Fitzgerald, Nick Wallace and Martin Fisher. And even back in sixth place, on extreme, Dave Wilson, Mark Quilliam, Sam Quilliam and Stuart Jones. They're on 1,016 centimetres. You know what this means? Out of those top five boats, one fish, one big one, one tope, a metre and a half long, could change the whole game. And we're coming into a period now, yesterday afternoon, the tope came back on the feed in the last 90 minutes of the match. And so did the smooth hands. It could still happen for any one of those top five. This, you could cut the atmosphere out here with a knife. Extraordinary stuff. Well, at last, some action on boat number 14. There's John Challoner, two kids around him, expectant stuff. This fish is running around the side of the boat. I wonder what on earth this is. Bearing in mind how tight this match is, well, I mean, what could you say? This could be, have any kind of significance you care to put on it because they've had such a difficult time this last hour or so. And you can see that the weather has kind of, I won't say taken a turn for the worse because we've been absolutely blessed with the way things have gone lately, but a fish on at last. Now, Tequila is back in third on 1196 centimetres, which is a little way back from Smartfish on 1,269 centimetres. So this will need to be a significant fish over a metre long to make any serious inroads. And the bend in John's rod suggests that it is something half decent. But what is it? That's the question. The situation at the moment is that they've had a couple of rays. They've had a couple of bream, or one bream in fact, and they've had three smoothies. What they need is for this to be a taupe or a really big smooth hound. What is this fish? I bet their hearts are absolutely thumping. And they're saying, be a taupe, be a taupe. Now, his face looked disappointed there for a moment. I wonder if this is a slightly smaller, smaller smoothie. The boy's looking over the side there. Look at that. Looking at what fish their dad's got on the end. Oh, hello, hello. It's a ray. It's a ray. Now, this is significant. This is significant. They've got it. It's safely in the net. Oh, yes. Well, it looks as though that fish that John has just landed, which is a stingray, sadly doesn't do the job because it's too small. It's smaller than the other three rays that they've had on the boat already. But I suppose it's a sign that there are some fish here, which you've got to take as a, an optimistic sign. And it looks as though Toby might have a bite on that middle rod. Very careful operation, John removing the hooks from this fish and putting it back in the water because they're called stingrays for a reason. They have a nasty spike with a sting on it. So there's Kelvin very carefully handling the stingray with John's assistance. <laughs> Safely released. <laughs> Well, as Toby Challoner escapes from the clutches of a conger eel, a little baby bootstrap one, you'll see his dad, John, photographing a bream, which adds a couple of centimetres to their total. Now, I don't know the significance of that yet. It won't take them back to the top of the pile, but where there's one bream, there are sometimes others. And it could be that they found a little shoal. Have they found it soon enough to make up the ground and regain first place.
Well, a moment ago I said where there's one bream there can sometimes be others and look at this, another bream for John Chaloner. Tricky to handle in a pitching boat, trying to have his photograph taken with the security tag. Well, half an hour to go and there is boat number 49, Smart Fish, captained by Will Parkinson, David Looney, Aaron Barrett, Graham Paisley on board. And they're going to push this all the way and it looks to me as if they're desperately trying to catch a bass. Now, let's just have a little run through their day on the second day of this incredible event. Their total 641 centimetres so far. They've had bream to 54 centimetres, smooth hound to 299 and crucially taupe to 288. The two other counting species, rays, zero on the scoreboard for smart fish. They've been used for all kind of things. In fact, I think one of them even has a tennis court on board, would you believe? But these forts are also an area that can be successful for bass. They haven't had a bass yet. In fact, bass, the one species we've seen so few of in this incredible event. But if they do manage to hook a fish here and they catch a bass, it could be hugely significant in this competition. Well, we've talked about boat number 49, Smart Fish. We've talked about boat number 14, Tequila. But the one boat we need to also consider in the mix is this little fella here, boat number 33. Paintball, the smallest boat in the whole competition. Stefan Eppeline and Kevin Hare on board. Do you know, they brought this little boat all the way up from the West Country to take part in the competition. And they are doing really, really well too. 606 centimetres of fish caught so far today as the clock starts to tick down. They haven't had ray, bream or bass, but what they have caught is smooth hound to 295 centimetres and perhaps most significantly of all on that tiniest of boats the biggest of the shark species that count in this competition 311 centimetres of taupe that's three really good sized fish now if they can hold on and maybe pinch just one or two bream right at the death or maybe a ray they're right back in the mix. They could be pushing the other two boats who are in the top two places all the way to the end. Well, that's it. It's all over. The boats are turning and heading for home. So let's have a little chat with Steve Porter to see what he's made of what he's seen out here on the water over the last couple of days. Now then, Skipper, it's all over. A little summary of what you've seen out here for these last couple of days. What's your view on what you've seen from this competition? Well, frankly, I've got to say, Andy, I'm blown away by it. I've never fished a competition, not that we fished this one, like this. I've done many competitions, but the organisation has been fantastic. It's been an amazing, amazing competition, and I'll take my hat off to the organisers and everyone involved, and I shall certainly be spreading the word oh. for people to come next year. This is an amazing event. Even more amazing when you consider this, Mr Porter, top three boats, and I'm not going to say in which order these boats are, are split by 15 centimetres. Yeah, that's incredible. So first place, then back 14 centimetres to second place, and back one place further to third. Between second and third is one centimetre. I mean, that's one not even reasonable bream, isn't it? Or, or a small smooth hound, or a little ray, or something like that. And there have now been over a thousand fish caught and registered in the competition over the two days and out of a thousand fish we're left with a gap that would have been filled by one fish i just think that's amazing it blows me away it is incredible and there's people out there who think fishing isn't exciting i think we've proven today or over the two days that it very much is exciting you could make a tv program about this it's a great idea i think we might do that anyway we let's get back to gun wharf so go back to work go on Aid, take us back to work. No, take us back to Gunwolf. <laughs> well, it's day five of this incredible event and this is the final conclusion. After yesterday's fishing, incredible action out on the water on the Solent, we're next to HMS Victory. The question is, who's won it?
After yesterday, here we are at an amazing presentation ceremony. First and second in the event, but we don't know who's first and we don't know who's second. We've got the guys from Tequila, the guys from Smartfish. Fellas, how are we? Yeah, tense, really tense. It's, um, it's what we do, we go out tournament fishing. Um, and it's, it was hard, it was really hard out there. Both days we were struggling with weed, you know, within five minutes your baits being down, they've been lifted off because there's weed coming up, lifting your baits, getting them out of the water, fresh bait on, back down. But yeah, it was tough, it was, it was good fun, but excited, it really excited. John, how did you guys sleep last night? Like a log, <laughs> like a log. Um, I bet the boys did. The boys, yeah, the boys went out for dinner, that's a bit well. Yeah, we and, went together. Um, we got back and they were actually saying, can I just go to bed, Dad? And the minute they hit it, the <laughs> pillow, bang, they were gone. So it was great. But yeah, a bit nervous, but very excited. Did you have a kind of an idea of how close everything was as the day progressed? At lunchtime, I knew it was really, really close. But it was a hard afternoon. The wind picked up and it was a bit, a bit choppy out there. But we just have to see what happens. Now then, there are two categories in this incredible competition. We'll find out who's won the recreational boat competition. But in the charter boat category, in third place... David Medwin, absolutely superb. Wet Wheels Solent takes third place. That's a boat that's specifically designed to help disabled anglers get out on the water. And they've taken third. An amazing performance from the anglers on board Harvest Moon, who take both second and first place in the Don't charter boat category. So the anglers who've won the charter boat Steve category Patrick this year, they were second place last year, England Internationals World Championship anglers, Steve Batchelor and Colin Searles. Winners of the charter category, come on, make some noise for them today. Fantastic. Steve first on the stage, punching the air with delight. A handshake with Colin. These two are an absolutely lethal combination. You've represented your country, you've been everywhere, you've won pretty much everything. Here you are with the first proper Sea Angling Classic in your hands. What does that mean to you as a pairing? It's special, isn't it? I mean, straight away, we've done our homework from last year. We stuck with the same Prince Skipper from last year. He's done his homework. I feel rewards been made. Yeah, uh, we worked hard for this, put a lot of effort in. As you know, we fish all the time. But we put a lot of time and effort in using the right gear at the right time and it's paid off and we're absolutely thrilled. This is the moment we've been waiting for for five days since this amazing competition began. The top three about to be announced. Who's going to win the boat or take away the £50,000? It's time to find out. In third place, Paintball! Unbelievable. Unbelievable. One centimetre between third place and second place in 750 metres of fish caught over the two days of the event. In second place for the 2022 Sea Angling Classic are Takeda! Amazing stuff. John Challoner, his two young sons, 11 and 14, and look at that, look at that. So the guys from Smartfish who've obviously won this by the smallest of margins. For the winner of the first Sea Angling Classic faces, here in the great waterfront city of Portsmouth, they are Smartfish, David Parkinson, David Ooney, Alan Barney and Greg Paisley. Come forward, guys. So big decision. So or £50,000. Boat worth £120,000 or £50,000 in cash. Well, we've made our decision. Some of you may know I'm a firefighter. I have been for 20 years. And also, we support, I support the firefighters' charity. So, a big portion or a portion of that, that money will go to the firefighters' charity because that's what we do. That's naval history in your hands. As people who spend a lot of time on the water, what does that kind of trophy mean to you? Uh, do you know what? It, it's great. Having a bit of history on it and knowing that our names are going to be on it, the first names on it, um, it is pretty special. The team, as we, we worked like an oiled machine, we, we knew what everyone's jobs was on the boat when we did it. And so, yeah, that was it. It's, 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 being, it's amazing. It's amazing. Really good and proud to have it. So, yeah, we're good. 
So, in the end, they decided to take the money. And the Challengers ended up in second place with lots and lots of stories to tell and more dreams for those two young boys to have about their future in angling. And this thing behind us, the fantastic prize boat, well, let me assure you that won't go to waste because Ross will use that to promote angling in a tour around the country. And next year, a brand new boat will be offered to the winners of the 2023 Sea Angling Classic. Do you know what? I think something very special has been born in the waters off of Portsmouth these last few days. What an amazing event.